Hi folks. Um, sometimes in uh, long time shops, you find the most interesting tools here. And this was found in Rob's shop. And uh, it's a very early deburring tool called the FUBAR. And it's got a precision chuck and uh, a little um, countersink in there for deburring. And then it's got this special designed handle. And I can demonstrate this. So I'll go over here and I've got a piece of aluminum over here with a raw hole and you start deburring. And you go foo bar, foo bar. Ah, oh. and you have kind of a crappy deburred hole because they didn't uh, make it right. But it's interesting anyway. Well, I got something that does work here pretty good. And I want to show you what it is. Now, I reground the jaws on this chuck in my other channel. And I'm going to do it again here. The other channel is kind of in mothballs. So, we'll just play with this channel. And uh, so I got, uh, let me find the chuck wrench here. And, of course, uh, there's going to be a number one pinion. And that's the one uh, that the uh, work wants the best. So this is a ground bar here. It's actually a countershaft out of a transmission. I inspected it. It's, it, it's well within a tenth diameter and uh, straightness. Oh, that darn! Fr I forget to turn off that uh, heater, but it's quite cold. So anyway, when you're tightening something like this. You want to bring the jaws just starting to contact and then rotate it, maybe even slide it in slightly while you're rotating. And when it stops, then you tighten it. And that helps take care of birds or uh, debris on the jaws. Okay, so we got that in there. And let's see what the run out is. Now I got an inner rapid indicator here, and I use these for uh, a reason. And as that is, they take massive abuse. So let's focus down on that a little bit. Let's see what the run out is. When it goes counterclockwise is high. So what have we got? We have got three just about one thousandths uh, run out and I was getting a half thousandths on that um, and I'm gonna just touch up these jaws again they're changing a little now let's get out to the end of the shaft here and let's see what we got <laughs> we got one thousandths a little over one thousandths Okay, it's a little better than uh, I was uh, expecting it to be. So, counterclockwise, that's the high point. And we're going to do the same thing. I bumped that base, but it doesn't matter. Get it over here. Tighten this up a little tighter. Okay, I'm going to rotate it again. About a thousandths and a half there. So that's that's the high point. I'm going to do like I did in the collet. I'm going to push down on it. But see, it springs back. Let's see what that is doing. Yeah, it's just springing back. So I'm going to put some pressure on it. Okay. And I'm going to smack it. Let's see what happened. <laughs> I made it quite a bit worse. Oh, well, maybe not. Okay, that's a high spot. Let's try it again. Whoop. Let's see what happens. Might be hitting it too hard. 
<laughs> I think I'm getting too excited. Okay, counterclockwise. Not so much pressure, a little lighter tap. Okay, I got it. Uh, just slightly over a half thousandths. So I'm going to try it again. Gotta squint a little. Well within one half thousandths. That's over six inch out. Let's see where we ended up here. We were at one thousandths. Okay, we are at better than one half thousand. So I was able to make corrections. Now, what you do not want to do is pull this in straight. You want to knock it straight. Now, if you want to support this, you want to get it straight, and then you can slide a steady rest in here and adjust the steady rest as you're rotating this, keeping it straight, not deflecting it. Because if you have this, uh, if you're doing high precision work, which I do, like on the Model 10 E, you don't want even a thousandths and a half deflection that you're pulling a shaft true with the tailstock or steady rest. So I'm going to look at, let's look at something here. Now, let's say the center is not true, okay? And not true with what you want to do on the shaft. And in that case, it could be a DC armature. And you're working on the commutator bars that are not necessarily true with the center. So like on a generator armature, it goes by the bearing, okay? The bearing's what holds the shaft true. So the commutator must be uh, machined true to the shaft, not the center. And there's a couple ways to do it. Here's one way here. I found this in Rob's shop. And I immediately talked him out of it because we're going to need it here. This is a bearing chuck. It's uh, a Jacobs number 100. Capacity up to, I don't know, three quarter. One quarter to three quarter. So you can do um, armatures with this. And larger ones, you'd use the steady rest. Okay. I still have a uh, Monarch uh, motor gener generator armature. I can uh, do some more demonstrations on in that regard. So I wanted to point that out, that no matter what you're doing, if you're looking for close tolerances, never deflect a shaft. Always get the shaft running true with the center, if that's needed, or, or, or uh, keep it true at the end if you're going to extend it. And that means not drilling a center hole at the chuck here, then extending it out. You'll see me extending it out, knocking it true, and then drilling the center. Okay? Hey, I'm going to be back with more cool stuff. i got to go over and see how Rob's doing. Okay, I'll be back.